A while ago, I shared a story about a client of mine who was applying for a Canadian passport, and he was considering whether to omit the information of his place of birth on his new Canadian passport. In case you didn't know, you can legally request to not show your birthplace on your Canadian passport. This is totally legal and perfectly reasonable to do. The Canadian government even dedicated a full web page to this and attached detailed instructions, including application forms, on how to do it. But at the same time, the government is warning that doing so might create some issues, such as one, problems getting a visa, two, delays at border crossings. And three, refusal of entry, as some countries need place of birth information. I found these warnings even more fascinating than the act of hiding your birthplace itself, because it seems that the Canadian government is allowing you to not show your birthplace on the passport, but at the same time discouraging you by throwing out these wild claims to scare you. I'll tell you why I think these are just scares in a sec. But before that, we need to go back to the very beginning to understand why some countries put place of birth information on the passport. Yes, some countries, not all. Good day, fellow planeteers. Welcome back to Passport Planet, a channel all about the VIP. Remember to stay till the end of this video to find out how I resolved my clients' problems. A pitfall for being human is that we can rarely, if ever, understand how other people perceive this world because every decision we make is based on our predisposition. That is to say, if you are from a country whose passport has the holder's place of birth on it, you will assume that every other country's passport also has this information, and you'll be baffled if you find out some passports don't tell you their owner's birthplace. You think to yourself, "How is that possible? How can this passport be valid if it's lacking crucial information such as the place of birth? How dare you to travel without telling everybody where you were born?" Well, it turns out your place of birth is not a big deal in a lot of countries, and many passports, including some of the best passports in the world, don't even list this information. The prime example of this is the Japanese passport, which doesn't show birthplace ever. The closest information on this is the bearer's registered domicile, which is a completely different matter. Missing the place of birth information does not stop the Japanese passport from being the best passport in the world, according to multiple rankings. And have you ever heard of any Japanese being denied entry to anywhere because their passport doesn't show birthplace? I haven't. Japan is not the only country that doesn't provide the citizen's birthplace info. The South Korean passport also refuses to go around and tell everybody where you were born. And again, it became the second best passport in the world, next to Japan. By the way, I got a whole video comparing the Japanese passport and the Korean one. Go check it out. Some other countries that don't mention the place of birth on their passports include Switzerland, which makes sense since it's famous for valuing privacy, and Saudi Arabia for whatever reason. By the way, the Swiss passport does contain a section called place of origin, but it has nothing to do with a person's birthplace. The place of origin on a Swiss passport always lists the names of municipality and canton in Switzerland, where the person's Swiss citizenship is registered. So it acts kind of like the registered domicile on the Japanese passport. Anyway, I think you get the idea by now. Amongst the passports I just mentioned, some are very powerful and others are not so strong. Which means whether you put your birthplace on a passport or not doesn't affect your ability to travel. Otherwise, the Japanese passport wouldn't have become the best travel document in the world. That in itself is proof that the border agents and most governments, to be honest. Don't really care where you were born because otherwise they will have mandated this information on all passports, right? After all, we cannot choose where we were born, and our birthplace doesn't determine who we are. Do you think just because you were born in Afghanistan that makes you a terrorist? Don't be ridiculous. What if you were born in Afghanistan to Japanese parents? Would you be questioned when traveling? Probably not because your passport doesn't say it. What if you are a naturalized Japanese citizen originally from Afghanistan? Would you be questioned when traveling? 
probably yes, even though your passport doesn't say it. But it has nothing to do with your birthplace. It has everything to do with how you look. You're being racially profiled. So forgive me if I fail to see how your place of birth is relevant to your identity. But it's not me that you need to convince. It's the Japanese government and a couple other governments too. But even amongst the countries that have the place of birth on their passports, the information they provide is often inconsistent and chaotic. For example, going back to Canada, the standard format for the place of birth on a Canadian passport goes like this: full name of the city and a three-letter code for the country. The problem is there are often multiple cities sharing the same name in one country, and without the name of the state or province, it could be very easy to mix up. For example, there are 91 cities in America named Washington, spanning across 30 states, but all of them will be listed as Washington, USA, on a Canadian passport, which doesn't tell you a lot about the person at all. On the American passport, though, for those who were born in the U.S., their place of birth uses the format of state name USA. For example, if you're born in Washington City, Georgia, to Canadian parents, then your American passport will say your birthplace is Georgia, USA. But your Canadian passport will say your birthplace is Washington, USA. And since both Washington State and Washington D.C. are more famous than Washington, Georgia, most people will assume you're from those two places instead of Georgia. And speaking of Georgia, if you're a naturalized U.S. citizen from Georgia, the country, then your American passport will simply say your birthplace is Georgia, because for U.S. citizens born overseas, the place of birth only includes the country name. But most people don't know how the naming convention on passports works, so if you show that passport to others, they'll simply assume you're from the Peach State. Jumping across the pond, the British passports only list the city name as the place of birth. Needless to say, this is even more confusing. For instance, if you see someone whose birthplace is Alexandria, you might want to ask if he or she was born in Australia, Brazil, Canada. Egypt, Greece, Poland, Bulgaria, Romania, Jamaica, South Africa, United States, or Scotland. You see what I mean? It's confusing and useless. Plus, now between these three countries, we have five ways of displaying your place of birth. Another point I want to make is that in most European countries, the place of birth on your passport only refers to the city. But some of them do the opposite, mentioning only the country, forgetting about the city. Plus, you already know that they don't bring up the place of birth at all in Switzerland and Liechtenstein, which means there's no consistency even within Europe. Imagine how complicated it will be if we add the other 100 something countries into the equation. There's no international standard on how you should arrange this information, and the reason is very simple: nobody cares. As I've told you, it doesn't define who you are, and there's no good reason to demand it. In fact, the International Civil Aviation Organization (ICAO), which is the UN agency responsible for setting the standard for all passports, has said in their document that the inclusion of the place of birth is optional. I mean, of course, otherwise the Canadian government wouldn't have allowed you to hide it. Some people might still argue that there is a difference between a passport just not having a birthplace to begin with, and there being an empty space where it normally is. Well, you'd be glad to know that the Canadian passport is the former. Let me explain. Nowadays, when boarding a plane or crossing into another country, your passport will usually be checked in one of two ways: scanning the machine-readable code right here. Like a lot of the airlines do, or accessing the information stored in the electronic chip if you have a biometric passport. Unless there's a huge blackout that sends humanity back to Timbuktu, then no authority nowadays will log your passport information by hand because one, it's way quicker to use the computer, and two, to avoid human error. According to the Canadian government, the information inside the machine-readable code and the computer chip is listed here. Notice something missing? That's right. The place of birth is neither in the code nor in the chip, because again, place of birth is not essential information. 
So what did I tell my client in the end? Well, that conversation is privileged. I'm professionally and legally bound to not talk about it. However, in the next video, I can and will talk about the reasons why some people want to hide their birthplace. Remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell so that you won't miss future videos. I'll see you soon. Bye.